It's time to sit down and talk about brands, which have been my favorite of 2023. I'm gonna give you my top three and then brands that I want to look out for next year. So this is gonna be the last video in this wrap up series of running shoes for 2023. And I wanna talk specifically about brands, which ones have really lit up the sky for me? Which ones have I really, really enjoyed? And then of course, ones that I really want to focus on next year, ones that I wish I tried a little bit more of. I'm gonna give you my top three and then we'll dive into all of that afterwards. So if you're excited for today's video, guys, make sure you give it a like, share it with your friends, and of course, do consider subscribing to the channel for weekly running content. Let's get in to this top three. So coming in third place is Puma. Been loving their shoes this year. Been lucky enough to try three of them, the Magnify Nitro 2, the Forever Run Nitro, and then the Deviate Nitro Elite 2. I really hope to be able to test more of their shoes at next year, but these three have been really, really good. And the reason they've come in third place, I haven't tried any more, and I know they have a bigger range than this, but but from what I have tried, I haven't had one disappointing shoe. So there's not been one shoe in this range uh, that's disappointed me in the slightest. Granted, I haven't put as many miles in the Magnify Nitro as I'd like to, but I've got over 100 miles in the Forever Run, and this one is a solid staple workout shoe for me, although it's not a racer, and it doesn't quite match up to some of the other racing shoes. I do find this one to be really, really exciting. And not only are Puma's shoes really, really comfortable and really enjoyable, but they're priced well as well. They're affordable. They are in a time when running shoes are permanently going up in price. They're the brand that is sort of keeping it honest and keeping it a lot more affordable, not to mention the fact that they usually have some great sales. So it's not too long before you've got to wait for things to go on 10, 20, 30% discount, which is fantastic. In my eyes, a lot of people, and I see a lot of comments from you guys out there saying that they're one of the most affordable brands. And not only are they affordable, as I just said, they produce brilliant shoes too. So it's a great win-win situation for so many of us, but focusing on the shoes themselves, as I said, the Forever and Nitro, was a staple in my lineup for a long time, got over 100 miles relatively quickly, and I enjoyed that one, although I never produced a 100 mile video, that sailed over it, and it came third on my top uh, running shoe list most used of the year. And that Puma Deviate Nitro Elite 2, wow, it is such a good shoe. I really, really enjoy that one. And again, that's gonna get plenty more miles to and sail up and over the 100 mile mark. I can guarantee that. So there's Puma coming in in third place. And coming in in second place is On, a brand that I'd never tried until this year, but I tried four shoes. Yes, there's one missing, the Cloud Boom Echo 3. That's because it was used yesterday or the day before on a session, and I absolutely love it. So I've been lucky enough to test the On Cloud Stratus 3, the Flow 4, the On on Cloud Eclipse, the latest edition, and the On Cloud Boom Echo 3. And I am really surprised to be putting them in second place, but they're a brand that I have really, really enjoyed this year. Now, I, I guess you could call it fortunate. I hadn't tried any On shoes until this year. And I had heard early reports uh, back two, three, four years ago when On really started to break into the running space that some of their shoes weren't that desirable. A little bit firm, not very good midsole. Geometry wasn't quite right, just a little bit of a clunky type of shoe. And I heard that feedback from a lot of people. A few liked it but others not so much. But fast forward to this year, and they really seem to have shaken things up. And for me, out of the four shoes I've tested, they've all been really, really good. Incredible performance, incredible comfort. And in particular, the racing shoe, the On Cloud Boom Echo 3, is probably my favorite workout shoe at the moment. Again, it didn't quite cut it against the Vaporfly 3 or the um, Saucony Endorphin Elite, um, but it's very darn close. And I wouldn't hesitate to race in it, but I am really enjoying it for those workouts. I've locked into my marathon training mode now, and I'm really picking shoes in my rotation that are gonna serve me well, that I feel good when using, and that I really want to use. And that one has been selected, and for the second week in a row now has been used for a workout. The other one, as an example, is the Saucony Kinvara. Um, and this one I want to highlight as well, the On Cloud Flow 4. This is one that I've really enjoyed. Um, this is one that I've gravitated towards more moderate running. I've done some sessions in it as well. This is over 50 miles in this one so far, and it's really, really comfortable. And the On Cloud Stratus 3 and the On Cloud Eclipse, in particular, the Eclipse, this is the next uh, easy day run shoe that I'm gonna be focusing on trying to get to 100 miles, because my word, isn't this thing comfortable? So yeah, I really cannot grumble about On. I mean, at the end of the day, their prices are relatively steep, and I have to be honest, all of these shoes from On have been gifted to me, so I do feel extremely lucky. I know their prices are on the expensive, side but I do feel now like having tested the four models this year the prices are as justified as they can be because they are really really enjoyable shoes so that's it 
on coming in at number two. And yep, you guessed it, Saucony coming in in top spot. Just a couple of the shoes that I've tested this year, but my word, I have tested some incredible shoes. And of course, the Saucony Endorphin Elite, which if you follow the channel, you know has now been promoted to my race day shoe of choice. This thing is monstrous. It's incredible and it is now absolutely my favorite over the Nike offerings such as the Vaporfly and the Alpha Fly. Here's another one, the Triumph 21. And of course, more recently, the Ride 17 has blown my mind. Now it wasn't a completely 10 out of 10 year for them. The Ride 16 and the Guide 16, which is this one here, weren't my favourites. I didn't find these to be great upgrades from the version 15, but as I've just mentioned, the 17 is a massive, massive difference. So I do just want to highlight the fact that not every shoe I've tested of them this year has been fantastic, but the ones that have really stood out to me this year, the Triumph 21 has been fantastic, albeit not put too many miles in it, but from what I have, I've loved it. The Ride 17 already, which I received just over a week ago maybe two weeks ago has already got 40 miles in it two long runs moderate run easy run it is flying and I absolutely love it and I wish I got it a couple of months earlier or it had come out a couple of months earlier because my word that would have been up there for a shoe of the year contender I am loving it the Saucony Endorphin Elite of course has been phenomenal and then of course the Kimbara 14 which again is at home because it's in my running shoe rotation right now that has been an absolute breath of fresh air not to mention the fact that I've been using the Speed 3 and the Pro 3 a little bit earlier this year which are, of course are last year's models but I just want to highlight why I feel Saucony just works so well for me. And it's gonna be down to the makeup of the shoes, the way they're built and the way they're structured. There's a lot of marketing labels that goes on in running shoes and we've got form fit going on from Saucony. Uh, we've got speed roll technology. And these marketing terms get used by all sorts of different companies. And it's just a way that they, it's kind of buzzwords that they like to use uh, to get you to think, oh, they've really put some effort into this, this, and this. But I can tell you this, Saucony really do put effort into every aspect of their shoe. The fit, this form fit, the fit of every single shoe, I have never had an issue with, especially over the last two or three years. The last Saucony shoe I didn't enjoy was the Kimbara 11, and then that went straight away. I sold that on eBay as quick as I could. It was horrific. But since I picked up Saucony shoes back last year, I have not had one shoe that doesn't fit great. Yes, the Ride 16 and Guide 16 weren't great rides in terms of it was the midsole that let them down, but overall the form fit upper, the way it wraps around the top of your foot, the lacing systems that just literally hug your foot, the back of the sections on every single shoe, just you literally put your foot in there and it feels like you're putting your foot into a slipper on every single single shoe. It is incredible the way they get every shoe so dialed in. Then of course it comes down to the midsoles, what you like, what you don't like. Power and PB, what we see here in the Triumph 21 and of course in the Ride 17 is absolutely phenomenal. The original power run that's in the Kimbara 14 right now, if you're watching the training series you'll use it, you'll see I've used it twice now in both of the opening episodes for my London training, and no doubt it will be used again uh, for this weekend. And the outsole traction, I've just never had an issue with, only in the speeds, but otherwise, every other outsole traction on every shoe, I have absolutely loved. Their shoes are phenomenal, top notch, and to be honest with you, ranking them in podium order, getting Saucony at the top, there's a big gap between Saucony and second place. Now there is one brand that I'm really, really excited for in 2024, but before I reveal who that is, I do just wanna say that I hope to continue testing as many of these brands as possible, especially these top three, more Puma shoes, more On shoes, more Saucony shoes. Saucony's lineup in particular next year looks pretty darn special. I've seen a few videos, a few teasers, and I'm really excited for more of their stuff. But as I said, moving into next year, I know there's a couple of brands that I'm just not going to be able to test as I'd like to. Like Asics, for example, they just don't make their super shoes in my size. The Super, Bar, super Blast, even in the latest drop now in that red colorway, still only goes up to a size 12. So they are kind of limiting what I can test. And you can only get as excited as you can by testing daily trainers. I really want to test some of their speed day stuff. Sadly, it's not going to happen. Obviously, the Magic Speed I can, but not their racing top end. Similar thoughts there on Brooks. Again, I can't test, test their racing shoes, but at least I can test their speed day shoes so that's a good thing um, and of course I am worried about the Brooks Hyperion Max 2 it does have a plate a Piba plate I think I just don't want every single shoe to have a plate in it so that kind of worries me a little bit I, I love the Hyperion Max and it won shoe of the year because it didn't have a plate and because it was so responsive the way it was um, but I have gathered that they have added a couple of mil stack into the Hyperion which is a shoe I didn't really enjoy this year so I'm hoping that by a couple more mil stack that might help and that might kind 
kind of feel a little bit like the Hyperion Max. We'll have to see. Those two brands I'd love to be able to test more of in particular, but the one standout for me has got to be New Balance. And the simple reason for New Balance is not only have I seen a lot of their lineup for next year and I feel they've got a lot of exposure from the running event, I'm sure a lot of you guys have seen those videos of their exciting lineup in 2024 probably a little bit overexposed to be honest with you because they've been everywhere uh, but it does look exciting but the main reason in all honesty is that I love New Balance shoes and I just didn't buy any last year. I tested a fair few New Balance shoes in the past and I've really got on with all of them. Sizing on some of them can be a bit funny but overall they are really really good. They've always worked for me and I really don't know why I didn't test too many last year so I really want to make an effort next year to try and test more New Balance. And the only other brand that I wish I could fall in love with a little bit more but I just can't due to their awkward sizing is Adidas. I just don't know why their sizing is so awkward. The Takumi Sen 9 has been brilliant this year for sizing. The Adios Pro 3 is just damn awkward and it would have got well over 200 miles by now if it wasn't such a weird sizing uh, profile. I find that with the 13 and a half, I'm a 13, I go 13 and a half and I still only have half a thumb width, maybe even less than that. But if you go up to a 14 and a half, which I have in other Adidas shoes before, just to try them, we have an outlet shop near us, they're so big and baggy, they're too much. So why is half a size bigger in Adidas still less than a thumb width? Whereas if I went for a 13 in most other brands, I get a full thumb width at the end, which is what I like. Adidas 13 and a half, half a thumb width or maybe less than it's just the most weirdest thing the Takumi was fine the Pro 3 was not so it just puts a bit of hesitation and me spending money on Adidas shoes because I just worry about the sizing and if I'm going to get the right fit and feel but otherwise they're a great brand and if their sizing was better I'd absolutely try more of those so there we go those are my thoughts on the brand of the year I'd love to hear which your favorite brands have been this year please do drop a comment below It'd be great to hear from you down there and of course let me know what you're looking forward to testing next year. If you're lucky enough and have a bit of spare cash to throw at some running shoes, do let me know what you're intending to buy, what looks good, or maybe on discount over Christmas and into next year, what might you pick up from this year that you've had your eye on? Because there's been a lot of great shoes tested and I'm sure in a minute after Christmas, there's gonna be some incredible discounts where we can all pick up some of this year's amazing models. Do drop a comment down there. It'd be great to hear from you and chat more there. That's it from me today, guys. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please do consider giving it a like, share it with your friends, and of course, subscribe to the channel for weekly running content. And I'll see you on the next one. Until then.